Welcome to the newcomers talk that Bastian and me we are going to talk about. So go. Oh. Next one. Yeah. So what is this about? So this initiative uh, takes care about the first timers to know, like the first time they contribute. So we try to make a smooth process for them to, to start with GNOME. For that, we have to provide the required knowledge, so we don't assume that they know uh, anything uh, before starting. So, for example, the tools like Git, Terminal, or whatever, they should be explaining at least the steps that are needed for the first contribution. So, also, okay, you can have all the tests, whatever, all the guide, but at some point, uh, they will require like uh, personal interaction. So we have to be there for helping. Like we have to have a IRS channel or something, so we can uh, interact with them dynamically. All right. <laughs> so why do we need it? So for this, we have to answer first the question of what's the target audience. So in my personal experience, the newcomers that comes in these last uh, three years, I have been working on the newcomers. Uh, usually it's people at university, they are on the second year, so they know the basics of programming, but they don't know like uh, Git, Terminal, they maybe even doesn't know uh, Linux or packages. So, of course, one of the questions is, uh, where can I contribute? Because usually they want to contribute and to learn to some project. But they, they, have, they are not clear on what project is appropriate for them or what project they would like to. So we have to provide a set of uh, projects that are appropriate for these newcomers and that we know that we can help them there. So I forgive you once. Okay. So what does are appropriate for me? Because this okay, you now choose the project, but then now you need to know what tasks are appropriate. Because of course in Bookzilla we have uh, plenty of tasks, uh, but they might be invalid. They might be that the maintainers doesn't care about them. So we have to, to provide this uh, like a series of tasks that are appropriate for newcomers and that they are easy. So then one of the questions is uh, how can I contribute? What tools are needed for my first contribution? So here we have to explain them and provide information like Git, Terminal, and everything that they will need, like GH build, build systems. And once they are set, then now they need to do the actual contribution. So what tools can help me to do the, uh, the first contribution? So two years ago, three years ago, we actually didn't have much, many tools to help them. But now we have, for example, this uh, GTK inspector, that is the, this tool uh, to inspect GTK applications that you can uh, pick a widget and know the properties or know everything that you want about this application. And now also uh, we have a non builder that is the new ID that we have like high hopes on it that it will help, help uh, much for newcomers. And even then, uh, at some point, they will need some, uh, as I said before, I asking to a real person. So we have to provide uh, tools or, or the people that are willing to help them. So one of the questions that we can answer is, who can help me, even if I read everything and I have all the tools? So let's do a little of history of this initiative. This actually started in an initiative called Nom Love. So it was the first attempt to help newcomers, and it was created by Paolo Borelli, that is a developer of the edit, in 2004. And it was mostly a collection of useful links and random tasks about random projects. So of course, at the start, you don't know uh, what the newcomers need, so you just provide what you know, like links to documentation, uh, like documentation to GID, documentation to uh, GTK, but not, not actually a step-by-step -step guide, which was one of the problems. So this is how it looked like in 2014, before we start reconverting this initiative. So you can see actually the iconography we have, it was like a herd because of the love part. And what knowledge, as I said before, a little, what knowledge is required or this guide assumed that the newcomers had? So the, the guide, um, uh, at some points, it says something like, OK, you have to create a new commit and contribute the patch in Buxilla. But it, and we didn't expli explain how, like an easy step, like just do this and you have it. 
Also, uh, packages like install dependencies. So at some point, for GHPL and for installing a new module, you need uh, like to install all the dependencies. This is something that the newcomer might not know, like installing uh, packages or searching for the dependencies. So this is some knowledge that the guide uh, assume on the newcomer, but we didn't provide the information. Also, book tracker. Um, we have Bookzilla, and we know that Bookzilla is not the best UI experience for newcomers or for for whatever, like for everybody. <laughs> because it's even hard for me, even now, to search for something on Bookzilla. So we cannot say something like, just search for tax on Bookzilla. No. no, I cannot do it. We cannot expect the newcomer to do it. And then we have uh, GHBuild, that is the tool to build the platform. That is a pretty complex tool, and we actually only need a minimal set of tools of this um, of GHBuild to make the first contribution. So we have to make sure that we only explain this part. So what were what were the problems? I guess you guess most of them, but the problem we we realized that this guide or this initiative had. So the guide assumed knowledge, as I said before, it was like just links to the Git documentation, like. I don't know, like the whole Git documentation, if you don't know it. But otherwise, it assumes that you know how to do commits, how to do branches, how to contribute patches. And another problem, this was more technical, is that GHBuild was seen as a generic tool for building applications, more than a tool for contributing to GNOME. So the problem is that you install GHBuild, and then you try to build something and you cannot. Like out of the, of the box, you cannot. So this is not a good experience for a newcomer. You need to create a configuration, configuration file and everything. So we try to change also this part of, of the initiative, like uh, change the GH build to be more like the, the tool to contribute to GNOME. Another thing that this was actually hard to change is that we try to cover all distros, like OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Fedora, Gentoo. All of them in different versions. We have like how to install dependencies on them, how, I don't know, like completely crazy uh, wiki page for all the distributions. So the problem with that is uh, the documentation were update, uh, update pretty quick. So the problem is that when the came and tried to build it, it expect to build because it's there in the documentation, but it was working maybe half of the time. So this is actually very frustrating for them, and the first thing you want to avoid on newcomers is frustration. Also, we realized that the naming and the iconography of this initiative was not very good because we have, okay, num love, but this love doesn't give a hint of what it's about. And also, the iconography about uh, heart. We are not sure if in other cultures the heart means love or it actually provides the information about uh, contributing to num. So, we thought that was a little problem that we wanted to change as well. So with these problems and the goals that we set, we tried to reborn this initiative on something called newcomers that uh, Bastian also will talk about. Um, yes. So uh, approximately last year, we uh, made a rebrand. Uh, so that was the wiki pages, the Boxilla product, and also the IRC channel that completely changed over to, to newcomer, uh, something that uh, is more about, you know, it does what it says on the tin. So uh, if you're a newcomer, it's it's hard to be in doubt about where to be uh, now if, you, if you're looking for it. So this is how it looks like uh, at this point in time. So uh, instead of being a collection of guides, the newcomer guide is in itself a guide that tries to follow a step-by-step -step order. So it's more simple uh, and doesn't have as many interlinks that might uh, take you away from uh, what you're actually intended to do. Um, this is the overall structure. So you can see the uh, this step-by-step -step structure. So uh, to answer the, the question that uh, a newcomer might have, what project should I actually work on? Uh, this is uh, what the first page is about of the newcomer guide, where you get to choose a project. And you also get to know who is mentoring the project and how to get in touch with those who are actively contributing to the project. The second step is then to uh, get the project built, which is uh, a, a revamped version of the, the GHPL tutorial. Then there's a page about uh, giving some tricks on how you can 
uh, try to solve a, a specific newcomer bug that you have uh, stumbled upon or from uh, the Boxilla product of the project. And finally, there's then this uh, page on how to submit uh, patches so you can start making your first contribution. So you can see we did it in this order following the questions we, we said before. So it's the order that usually a newcomer uh, make questions by himself. So we try to uh, follow this order. Yeah. So the uh, choose a project page uh, lists around seven projects at the moment. And these are uh, chosen and has uh, had to, is based on some uh, requirements that I think is on the next slide. Um, but essentially they say, uh, uh, have a nice wiki page and uh, that it makes a requirement that the, the mentors uh, that volunteer to help the newcomers, they are also active at the newcomer channel and try to help uh, the newcomers get started with uh, building the Agnome project for the first time. Um, if, yeah, this is the, the, the wiki template at the moment that uh, is required to use. Uh, and the reason for this is to minimize the amount of text that you have to read and then be more visually pleasing. So uh, it's more attractive for the newcomer to to uh, maybe contribute to this specific project. It also uh, it puts a requirement that the projects list what resources that they have uh, and, and that the newcomers should be aware of uh, so that when you get further into the process of contributing, uh, you can uh, find the claim in a, in a place that looks similar in all projects. Yeah. Um, this is the JH build uh, tutorial at the moment. Instead of supporting a wide range of distros, it's been narrowed down to supporting just Fedora 24 and the latest Ubuntu as well. And uh, then all the, it's, it's basically a series of steps that you execute. And then uh, since it's JS built, we hope there's no errors and uh, hope that everything builds as it should during a cup of coffee. Um, and uh, yeah, prior to that, it, it's been uh, rewritten a lot. So it's, it's, it's easier now list the dependencies of uh, JS build itself. So you don't have to do guesswork for that and, and so forth. Um, curiosity, we had four guides of GHB before. Yeah. They were spare and everyone was using one or another or another. So the first question when the uh, newcomer came was like, which guide are you using? Instead of having used a single one. Mm. And there was the problem that if you followed one and then stopped and tried to follow yeah, another, follow you would one. go into problems <laughs> and yeah. That was, that was crazy. So uh, this is uh, also a new page. Um, it tries to cover the everyday tools that everyday contributors use, but don't necessarily think about small tricks like using git grep to get uh, some piece of code inside the project or using the GDK inspector to uh, inspect what's going on uh, if there's some weird behavior or using dev help, for example. And then it tries to list uh, a, a workflow. So in case you are stuck, with a specific issue and your own methods of trying to solve them doesn't work, then you can 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 go to this and, and see what what might help. And this is the final page, which has also been 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 cleaned up uh, on submitting patches, of course. Uh, so it introduces uh, a bit of version control and a bit about our uh, all beloved uh, Boxilla, and then. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. So it's trying to be as uh, short and concise as possible uh, at the moment. So with those four steps, you should pretty much have your first contribution in place then. Um, so there are some uh, things uh, down the road that uh, we're looking forward to, to have in, in here as well. Uh, some thoughts and some open questions uh, that are left. And that's, that's what this is going to cover. Um, currently, uh, the, the structure is that uh, the newcomer guide, of course, focuses on uh, the coding aspect of contributions, but in GNOME, you can do a lot of other contributions. And the Got Involved page on the website that we have all links to these uh, different guides on how to get involved in these different teams or get involved in, in different competencies and skills. and. Uh, there are some information currently living in the newcomers guide that could be shared with these guides. So 
one challenge is how do we position this information so it's shared and it moves out of uh, the newcomer's guide and will become beneficial for all of them. Um, but yeah. And uh, this is the, the, the project tour, which is what I was talking about, the information in question. It briefly goes over uh, the different uh, infrastructure that we have in, in GNOME, such as uh, the Wiki and Planet GNOME, and uh, introduces IRC and the GIMP network. And that's the, that's the information that would be great to share among all of the different um, guides somehow. Then uh, another thing that's happening is because of uh, Flatpak and because of Builder, we now have uh, soon a very much easier way to actually uh, get started building applications. Um, for example, the JH build guide could be simplified just for the newcomer applications to just two steps. Uh, if uh, you could build a GNOME projects, the newcomer projects specifically, and if we could support them, so you simply had to clone them and press the play button. Uh, that would be uh, really amazing. <laughs> and then uh, there's effort going into the developer center as well. Um, currently, it hosts the uh, API in C for a lot of GNOME's components, and it hosts some different guides of questionable dates um, in various places and also has it has a lot of important information as well and also for newcomers for example uh, introduction to gdk i rewrote that one and a half year ago um, and that would be really great to have somehow more prominent um, there's been some uh, efforts to Im improve this at the fostem uh, no, was it a first? No, it wasn't a first. Was it before the first? Anyway, uh, there was a meeting about um, using hot dog and uh, improving the the front page and so forth. And I know Alan also has uh, mockups, I think. And there was work being done at the GDK Hackfest. So there's definitely something happening here. Uh, not something I'm too aware of, but. Um, it's very important for, for the newcomer initiative as well because the, this developer center is uh, one of the resources that you really see uh, when, you, when you as a newcomer try to get familiar with the API for the first time. So it's important that we get it on, on some level that is uh, equivalent to what newcomers might come from, like, I don't know, Mozilla Developer Network or Microsoft Developer Network. You know, the these big uh, databases with lots of uh, good information and good searching and uh, where you can easily find what you're looking for in the specific language you're looking for and so forth. And finally, there's the question of, uh, uh, we, we also talked about that, that there's the user that we're seeing is the student who might uh, not be familiar with bug tracking and version control or might not even be familiar with Linux. Uh, so how do we uh, ensure that we can, uh, if not, I mean, we, we are definitely maintaining GNOME-specific documentation uh, to help them get started in GNOME, but some of these things are prerequisites to get started for coding in GNOME, and uh, if we can find some good external resources or upstream some of, uh, like, so we can improve the documentation, that would be great. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's it. <laughs> Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> or, oh yeah. Or with yeah. The, over the microphone, and I will I will check this. Okay, so I have a a couple questions. Um, one um, is, how do you deal deal with the uh, when newcomers come in? They look for newcomer bugs. But I'm, I've seen several instances where there are no newcomer bugs. Uh, so what if a, uh, so that's that for me that's like a loss uh, of of being able to uh, work on GNOME if there's no newcomer bug. What? How would you? I'm, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but how do we get our developers to? to be more aware of, of things that could be easily fixed. I'd rather they fixing it could could be considered a newcomer bug that 
you know, strategically we get new people to work on something simple. Uh, so that's question one. Question two is I hate GH build. <laughs> and um, it is, it's error prone and it's, it's hard to uh, even, even with inside GNOME builder, we, we, you know, um, and in a lot of cases, most people don't care because I think GH build is great for core components up until you hit Nautilus or whatever. But if you're working on application layer stuff, I would rather we switch to uh, flat pack runtimes and, and just embrace that future and, and, and actually move towards runtime system because we are, we actually have all that. There's no reason to do any of that stuff. Because everything is already encapsulated in the SDK, so that's that's more of a comment, not a question too. So, sorry, but if you want to answer the first one, yeah, should I? Okay, uh, I forgot what the first one was now. So the, the first question was, uh, what we do to make sure that? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, I, I I'm not sure if the requirements specified that but then i think it should like if you uh decide that your project you would like to have your project listed on this uh choose a project page where we currently have seven projects listed then it's also like as a as a mentor for the project it's also a part of your responsibility to ensure there is work for the newcomer to do so the newcomers don't try to build your project and spend hours in GH build just to find out that no, there's nothing to actually work on <laughs> except some very complicated mess. So uh, that's currently where the responsibility lies. And um, uh, yeah, so so f f I, I guess that answered your question. Maybe or I mean, uh, is sure your experience well, that you've seen it with the projects that's been listed in here? Or is it? Are you talking more general? I guess I'm. I'm it's. I'm more. I'm more interested in making sure there's always newcomer bugs. To work. Mm, not, yeah. Not because having zero newcomer bugs just yeah. defeats the purpose. Yeah, completely. Uh, mm. you know, you're losing somebody who wants to work. I mean, and, and, and then saying, "Oh well, I want to rather work on." You, to work on this other one, which maybe it's like a difference where it's like I know Python, but I don't know C, and so they would rather work on the, the project with Python. So you know, it's it, it's just trying to make sure that there is mm. something for newcomers to always be working yeah. on. Right. So the good thing is that since we have only seven projects and we we can we don't want to have more, we we can take care about well, I mean. Mm -hmm. um, we can take care about uh, going to the link for newcomers and make sure there is at least one or two or, or five newcomers bugs. If not, we can reach a maintainer and say, hey, do you remember that this was a requirement and there is no more newcomers bugs right now? Can you make sure that you have some? Ah, yeah, sure. Uh, probably it's right. not a problem because it, they are really like no beforehand. We should track on, uh, yeah. at some yeah, 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 definitely. Maybe we can have a a bug po uh, like a bot that pokes us every time there's a project running out of uh, newcomer box. <laughs> it, it's just one of those things because mm. what I like to do is I like to export our bug database, the newcomer ones, and and take it to places where I mean we keep our bugs in our bugzilla. We we should be we should be uh, publishing them everywhere because. Nobody's. Good. You're assuming somebody has to make it, make the uh, uh, decision to go to a GNOME, go to a GNOME website, and then be able to and look for newcomer bugs. We don't want to do that. We want to be able to find them maybe at a university or whatever. There needs to be somewhere so that you're you're casting the lar largest net as possible. That's also why I'm saying that system of having newcomer bugs needs to be there as part of that other one. Because if it's not there, then you know each time is is a miss. Uh, we're we're missing an onboarding. So that's okay. I think I'll we have. Uh, uh, once I wanted to write an extension, so I found a tutorial on the wiki, but it was terribly outdated. So I just want to suggests to just introduce some labels, maybe red and green, or only red or orange or something, like 
in other wikis or Wikimedia, if something is outdated, just label it outdated, then people would be uh, would ignore that article and go and find something that is actually usable. Was this wiki for non shell extensions? Sorry? Is this wiki for non shell extensions? Exactly. So I create that one. And it's on the headline that is uh, that you shouldn't look at it. I don't know what, what they say, but they say like in in Mayus, I say something like. Uh, oh, maybe I have missed that. I okay. don't remember now <laughs> because. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I said it because I created yeah. and I was actually quite uh, when I. Oh, was maybe I have missed it, but just uh, use oh, maybe okay. some colors. People like me will find it simpler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can take care about just that specific one. No <laughs> Thank you. So we are out of question. One question more? Okay. Uh, maybe I should say here um, over now. <coughs> okay. Hello. I just have uh, two two small questions. One uh, is it only for GNOME core applications? In your list, you want only GNOME core. Yeah, applications? kinda. They have to be in GHBL basically. This is like the requirement. They they have to be in GHBL and follow uh, like being in GNOME. It's like part of the non project. Okay. Like, like GIMP. You, Sorry? GIMP. Would it be like uh, acceptable application? In that, that that's a hard question because GIMP is part of NOM, but it's so different. Which is why I asked. That is kind of no part of NOM. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's hard to, to answer this one, I guess. Okay. But yeah. GIMP, and GIMP precisely is the example of one that we don't, we don't support. Or, Okay, and the other question is more like uh, me I, I, as a newcomer to a project. I never looked at newcomer bugs. Usually, I I, I have a bug in a in a software I use, and uh, and uh, and I'm annoyed with this bug, and I decide to fix it. And uh, now, that when I'm involved in a project, I will look sometimes at random bugs that I I and I try to fix them, but as a newcomer. And so that's why also the newcomer bug concept, it's like, uh, I, I'm wondering if it's always like the best concept, like rather than you have a bug, you explain the, the newcomer how to, to, to build okay, the project, but then they should more be like, maybe uh, we, sh we could tell them how to f to find, how to solve your bug, but whatever it is, which may not be in the newcomer list. I don't know if you see what you mean. Yeah, the problem is that sometimes not even the maintainer knows if that bug is uh, is valid or if the solution, we want the solution or not. And that happens to me as a maintainer. Sometimes uh, someone comes and they, I want to fix this. And I say, okay, I think it's, th it's this. Then he tries, he makes the patch, and then I realize that uh, actually in the history, someone tried to fix it 10 years ago, and it clashed with another thing. And then you say, sorry, your patch uh, is, is uh, the code is, is the code is good, but we cannot, uh, we cannot accept it. And it's very frustrating. So we try to avoid this. You know, we have to make sure uh, the bug, um, I mean, if you want to fix it, you are free and, and it's fine. But for newcomers, we don't recommend it. Okay. This is the thing. Okay, so I think we have to finish up. Thank you very much for the attention. Thank you.